Welcome to Child Care Rockstar Radio. I am your host, Chris Murray. Child care leaders around the globe are breaking through challenges, leading the way in innovation, testing new best practices, and impacting children and families in a much more powerful and positive way than ever before. Each week, join me for interviews with early childhood leaders and experts that will leave you inspired to become the next child care rock star. Now, let's go. Welcome, everybody. Back to Child Care Rockstar Radio. My name is Chris. I am your host, and I'm thrilled to be connected with you. And I want to thank our friends over at Honest Buck Accounting for sponsoring this episode of Child Care Rockstar Radio. Is the financial side of your business taking you away from what you love about it? Honest Buck frees you up to get you back to the business you love and grow it. Honest Buck Accounting is your full service accounting partner. From payroll to forecasting, From budgeting to tax prep, they offer a variety of services to meet your early childhood business needs as it grows. Their experienced team comes alongside your business to free you up and help you thrive. And to show their support of early childhood businesses, Honest Buck is awarding a deserving center or preschool a $1,000 scholarship. Visit honestbuck.com forward slash Chris Murray to register your center to win. That's honestbuck, B-U-C-K dot com forward slash Chris Murray. And as always, Chris with a K. Thanks, everybody. Uh, Thanks, Honest Buck. And I'm really thrilled to have you guys back to the podcast. Today's episode is epic. And I am so excited to introduce you to Alvin Ayusa. And his story is incredible. He and his wife emigrated from the Philippines, and he came here a decade before the rest of his family. So they were apart for 10 years, what people do to live the American dream. And I think we take that for granted sometimes. Just saying. Alvin is an amazing human being. And he came into the preschool business kind of by accident, thinking that his wife would benefit from running a home-based daycare and it wasn't her gift, but then they pivoted and decided to go into a full-scale center and they have two locations in their campus, one that serves preschoolers and one that serves infants and tods. And um, it's just for kids preschool in Hesperia, California, about an hour outside of Los Angeles on the road to Vegas. (laughs) Kind of wish I was on that road right now. Um, But Alvin has taken a systems and software and automation background, which is what he was doing for a CRM company, and systematized his patootie off into a thriving, and get this, 90% full to capacity on June 22nd, which is when this was recorded, preschool, guys, and I'm not talking about just... Uh, registered but not attending. I'm talking about attending 90% to capacity. Hello, in this time of post COVID in California, one of the states with the most stringent lockdowns and uh, increasing cases. And he is still killing it. He and his team, his very inspired, motivated, and empowered team. And we talk about all the marketing tactics and strategies and messaging and things that he has done to drive enrollment during this post-COVID phase, all the way through from the very beginning of where we landed ourselves through this crisis and this pandemic in mid-March until today. So three months of action and implementation and incredible leadership. He and his team took the Leadership Mastery for Early Educators course that we offered in February and March, and that set up his culture for an amazing group of leaders that are truly operating as a team to drive full enrollment into his schools. I can't even, it's, he's one of the highest levels of enrollment. The one of my number one case studies of anybody I've ever interviewed on this podcast. And I've interviewed many, many empire builders and winners and highly successful business people on this podcast. So episode 75, it's perfectly timed with Mr. Alvin Ayusa. Let's get in. Let's get into it. Welcome back, everybody, to Child Care Rockstar Radio, episode 75. 
And on today's episode, my guest is Alvin Ayusa. He is a childcare owner, and his company name is Just for Kids Preschool, based out of California. Alvin, how's it going, man? Welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. This is a this is a dream for me, Chris. <laughs> A year, a year ago, actually less than even a year ago before we joined when we found you on YouTube, I told my wife one day I want to be part of that uh, podcast that Chris is doing. And here we are less than a year. Really very happy. Can't can wow. be any happier. Yeah, I am thrilled to feature you and I love being able to facilitate dreams come true. So that's wonderful. And I love having you in our group and seeing everything that you're implementing. So today we're going to really dive in to, I think, a huge success story and case study of what to do when you're faced with, you know, a market downturn, a crisis, a recession, COVID, whatever, Mm -hmm. whatever comes is, you know, Alvin's doing a lot of things that you guys are going to learn from today. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your business. How long have you been in the business of early learning? With early learning, I've just been uh, in this business for, in this industry for less than two years, I would say. My background really is in software. Uh, I am uh, a Salesforce.com CRM administrator by trade okay. before, I, before I joined or before I jumped into this industry. So prior to, uh, prior to acquiring my, my schools, I, I was working for an analytics company uh, for about seven years. And I was their lead uh, CRM administrator until they went to public. Then after two years after that, I left and acquired uh, acquired my preschool. And why did you get into the preschool business? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. So, my wife and I, uh, I've just I've, I've been here in the U.S. for about fifteen years, and for Joy and my kids, they've just been with me for five years here in the U.S. So we were we were apart for ten years wow. um, because of migration. So I only get to see them once a year. And during that time, there wasn't even any FaceTime at all then. So when they, when they migrated here, uh, I was asking Joy if she wants to work. And I told her, I really don't want her to work because I want them to get acclimated. And I want to be able to spend family with them because we've lost 10 years. I've lost 10 years with them. And I asked her if she wants to do a, a daycare in our home because we have a space. And she didn't want it. She didn't want it because she told me, uh, it would, I don't want the privacy being violated when we go on travel. Someone would have to stay there and we're not there. So we shelved that, uh, we shelved that, mm-hmm. uh, that idea. And then after, uh, after I left uh, that analytics company that I helped for 10 years, seven years, um, I told Joy, I, I got a good run with that company. And I don't know if I can find another career or another, another job, a full-time job. And I want to do a business. And I told her, remember when we were planning for uh, that daycare? I want to do it now and I want to do it bigger. And I got that idea to do it bigger from a friend in Vegas who has a, uh, a preschool there. And he went through the same, uh, the same way I did in acquiring. So he went on the internet, looked for a preschool that's for sale. And they, they got through that process and uh, when I approached him and asked him for tips and uh, and tools on how to get it, he was already on his like almost two years owning that business. So that got us into the preschool business. Um, I just got attracted to it uh, simply because um, I have my minor in education uh, back home. My, my major is in philosophy. My minor is in education. I never thought preschool. I never thought uh, elementary. I thought college actually back home mm. in the Philippines, but uh, I, it just gravitated me towards that. I think it's because of the passion for teaching. So what country did you migrate from or emigrate from? Uh, we're born and raised in the Philippines. My wife okay. and I and my two kids were actually born there. And now you're expecting your third. We are expecting our third. Uh, they actually have a good spacing. Well, too much spacing for that matter. <laughs> like between my first and my second, before because we were away with each, uh, we were away from each other for ten years. They have a ten year gap, and now with the second and the third, they have an eight year gap. I have an eighteen, and I have an eight, and I would have a zero. Wow, <laughs> that is quite the spacing. 
Yeah, when we go to Disneyland, we part ways because I'm not fond of ride. I go with the, my my eight year old, uh-huh. and my wife goes to uh, the California Adventure where there are actually bigger rides there. Right. That's I don't classic. know what would happen when the third comes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they always say it's an exponential shift between child number two and child number three. But luckily, you have older children to help you take care of the baby. So that's always yeah, a good we, thing. We are really very excited. Actually, we were, uh, we were a bit fearful or worried about our second because we didn't actually plan it. We just told ourselves, like, if there would be another blessing, we'll take it. And we were a bit scared and fearful for her, for Thea that she might not be able to take it or like she would uh, have some challenges. But she's so excited. Like she's very excited right now. We're all yeah. excited. We can't wait. It's, it's great. It's great. Tell us a little bit more about your preschool. What is the capacity and where is it located? Um, uh, and also I'd love to know, kind of did you come to it with a philosophy or a vision for the type of care you wanted to provide? Sure. Yeah. So my, my preschools, uh, there are actually two. So the first one was acquired in October of 2018. And then uh, six months after that, well, more than six months after that, we took over the second one, which is uh, its sister school. Uh, the first school is just for kids preschool. The second one is called just for infants and toddlers. So they're sister schools separated by a wall, really. Uh, capacity is 142 total for both, 190, uh, and then the other one is uh, 36 something. So that's, uh, that's how it is. When I came in, um, it was fully staffed. I I really, because I'm, this is not my industry that I'm playing when I acquired it. I really didn't know what, uh, what philosophy I'm getting into with what particular preschool I would be getting. Um, I didn't even know about Montessori. I didn't even know about all the curriculums that, uh, that were all that we all know right now. So Mm -hmm. when I came in, it's just all blank, blank, uh, sheet of paper for me, like acquiring it. And what role does your wife play in the school now? Yeah, so during the first year, uh, we were really very hands-on, the two of us. But because of the baby, she has to step back a little, one, to take care of the two kids because of this COVID-19. Like, they've been here, like, full-time now. <laughs> they've been with us for 24-7, uh, plus she's pregnant. So she now she's just taking mostly clerical work, uh, bills, payables, accounts mm-hmm. receivables. Those are... Those are the stuff that she's working on. Um, she's also our phone script, uh, phone script uh, czar, if I may call it. <laughs> so she's the one who's actually doing uh, uh, checking on the phone recordings and scoring our our staff. Mm. Uh, before, during the first year, both of us were hands on. We would be in our school almost like twice, thrice a week. Um, on the second year, uh, this year in particular we uh, strategically decided, okay, we're able to do a lot more when we are at home and, and are able to manage and lead our staff when we are working from home. So we strategically um, pulled a little back. And um, sometimes I just go now in school like uh, once or twice a month. Wow. Yeah. And how many employees do you have? Uh, combined, I have 18. Uh, okay. I have 18 right now. Yeah, two directors. I have. I'm still. I'm still. Uh, I'm still maintaining the two directors for each of the two buildings. Great. So, tell us a little bit about. Well, I have to get your fun fact first. So, I was going to dive right into your business, but let's ask our classic question, which is: We got to know more about Alvin. What is something that you can share with us that not too many people on the planet know? Not too many people. Um, <laughs> My, my bachelor is in philosophy because I was three years short of getting ordained a Catholic priest. Wow. So I stayed in the seminary for 10 years. So in the Philippines, there is still that high school for boys. And I got in. And my, my calling really was, uh, I thought my calling was really to be a priest. Mm-hmm. And on the 10th year, I decided, um, I told my I told my formators in the seminary, hey, I never had a chance to have uh, have a lot of family time with my parents and with my siblings. Is it okay if I go out first? So I, I went out. They, they gave me a regency is what they call it. Uh, so I went out, uh, took a corporate job. And uh, last thing I know, like I, I was asking Joy to marry me. 
and I never <laughs> I went back and we have three kids right now. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting how God works sometimes. I know. And obviously you, I feel that you are really meant to do this business because you're doing amazing things for your community in the world of early learning. So thank you. way to go. And that's a very, very interesting, fun fact. Um, we have a lot of members who are very spiritual and have different callings and a, a strong level of faith in oh. the academy. So I find that to be an interest. I feel like there's definitely a connection or a through line oftentimes between people who are very faith-based and people who want to serve children. Um, and, and that's actually one thing that attaches me to this academy, Chris. It just validates. I never knew really uh, the why before uh, when I took it. I mean, I, I thought this would be an easy way uh, to be rich, to be honest, when I acquired it. But then after I joined your academy in particular, I realized, especially our first summit in Florida, I realized, oh my God. Like there, this is, this is an industry filled with heart yeah. and there is a mission in here. It's not just to make money. And that is why I'm gravitating towards it. And I'm falling in love to it, uh, as the day, as the day goes on, even, even, even during this COVID-19, uh, challenges, I, I'm still, I, I wake up every morning, uh, like thinking of what challenges would I face now and what difference can I make for my staff, for my children, for myself, and for my family, which is why I'm really, really very happy I, I, I chose to be part of the Academy. Well, we're thrilled, and I can't wait to dig in with you on everything you've implemented, which is our focus topic for the day. And one other kind of insight I'm getting from just talking to you, Alvin, is People who have more of a technical background oftentimes can implement faster and get bigger gains in their business, whether it's a preschool business or any business. But because you came from a software CRM technical background, you were able to jump in to a lot of these technologies that are helping schools and centers be more of a successful business, whether it's childcare CRM or IntelliKids or parent communication apps and Brightwheel and all of these softwares that require technical implementation uh, and systems knowledge. And so I think that's also helped you, I'm sure. Do you yeah. feel that that's true? Yeah, no, totally. To be honest, the first, uh, the first YouTube video that I, I watched you um, you were you were teaching about uh, tracking your numbers, doing funnel, and my background uh, with Alteryx, the analytics company. I built their sales and marketing operations and their marketing automation. Mm. Why did I not think of that? Like <laughs> when you were talking about leads, funnels, like this was my world. Like yeah. I built, I built, I built that analytics company's marketing automation, marketing operations. We were tracking leads. We were tracking sales accepted opportunities. We were tracking sales qualified leads until they become become our customers. And right. why did I not think of like doing that with my school all along? Like I thought just because we're on a different industry, I cannot use that. And just it just validated it. And the more that I fell in love because, oh my God, I thought I would be leaving that world I loved for the last seven years of my life. And now I'm able to do it in my own business, which is why it's so thrilling for me. I can combine both. The, the thing that you are actually providing me, the academy, the, what the academy is providing me really, is the things that I don't really have. And I'm able to augment with the things that I have. What are those things that I don't have? Like, I really don't have good background in the industry, not knowing all the curriculum, not knowing all the tactics on how to execute on, a, on, a, on an early child care. And combine that with my, with, my, with my software background, with my operations background, it just becomes deadly sometimes. Sometimes like I'm, I'm in front of the computer for like 10 hours, 12 hours trying to like work on this stuff and trying to make it better. Yeah. Well, and that's, you know, when you fall in love with marketing and you fall in love with how to grow your business using systems and using great, you know, lead generation techniques, and we're going to talk right all about that right in this lane, yeah. is it makes it really, really fun, which is, you know, I listen to a podcast called I Love Marketing because we like to geek out on marketing stuff, but a lot of childcare people came to the business very much resistant 
Like what's a funnel? Is it something that we have out in the playground on, in, the, in the sandbox that we put, fun, you know, and I'm like, no, that's not what I'm talking about with a funnel. Like that's cool, but that's so really shifting people. And it's funny because so many people tell me, Jennifer Connor being one of them on my team now, and she was a client was, I came from a sales background. I don't know why I didn't think of applying the yeah. sales concepts when I bought my preschools, but I just didn't. So it like kind of took meeting me to help make that gap, you know, cross that gap for her and for you as well. So yep, yep. it's 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 actually uh, it's not a paradigm shift. It's it's really like mind blowing when I realized it after after I watched that YouTube video. It's like all all and then the rest of like reading your book, talking about lifetime value, customer lifetime value, yeah. talking about CAC, customer acquisition cost. Yeah, like I did all this for that freaking company. Like, <laughs> I do it with my own company right now. So that's all I'm geeking out right now. Really. Yeah, yeah, it's really good stuff. Awesome. Well, that's really really fun. So let's talk a little bit about what you are doing. We're right in this time right now in late June where uh, the United States is opening up yep. and Canada is opening up and the rest of the world post COVID and we're all dealing with you know, potential fear in parents' mindsets around increasing cases or, you know, additional risks and dangers out in the world, whether to mask up or not mask up. So all the communities are different. It's fascinating to watch. And so coming out of that, what have you done? Give us kind of a a state of the state of what happened to you during this March, April, May crisis. What happened to your business? Did you stay open? And then where are you today? Sure. Worth it. So I'll, I'll probably start right at the very start on prior to even the state declaring a, a, a shelter in place or a stay home order. I was telling my office manager, this was back in February, end of February. I told her this would go big and I want us to prepare for it. And she was laughing at me and she was telling me like, are you one of those believers? Like thinking of this conspiracy again? Like I told her, no, I just feel that this is something. Like, I just want us to be prepared because I don't know where this would take us. True enough, she went on a Hawaii vacation on the first week of March and she came back with COVID. And Wow. Yeah, she came back with COVID. And, well, she came back with the COVID, not, not the COVID sickness, but she came back in, in a COVID uh, challenge that we're all in. So I told her a uh, good thing that we had at least like a, a week of a runway. The first thing that we really did is we tackled it head on with our enrolled families. So when I heard the governor uh, giving the stay home order and that a lot of businesses might close, I actually released my first uh, letter email to, uh, to the parents and tackled it head on, letting them know that we're very much aware of the issue, uh, letting them aware on the usual regular cleaning sanitation that we're doing and that we're trying to provide the best care and the healthiest environment for the kids. But I also admitted, I I also took the fact that there are those people who may not be comfortable with sending their kids. And I told them that we would be, we don't have the plans yet during that time, that time. And I told them that they would hear back from me from then. And we did that each week. So from the second week of March mm. and for the first five weeks, we were writing our parents each week consistently every Friday. We were sending letters to them every Friday. And as we, as we were sending those letters and emails to them via Brightwell and via our CRM, there were questions that were coming up and we had to answer those questions. And these questions are just consistent with what one parent, two parents, three parents are asking. And that, that actually gave birth to our FAQs. And the first FAQs focused on COVID was really meant on just avoiding the phone because every parent would be calling us, asking us the same thing. And I told my office manager, let's formulate all these FAQs and let, let's make it part of our second letter that would go to the parents. And that's what we did. And then... On the, third, uh, on the third letter and on the fourth letter, there were more FAQs and it's changing by the minute, changing mm-hmm. by the hour on mm-hmm. the things that, are, that, that the government is releasing to us. And I told my office manager, 
this isn't, we can't keep up with this FAQ because I would always have to call every time I write a letter, the new letter, I would have to call back the prior FAQ and tell them referencing to our FAQ from last week. And I got tired of that. And I told my, I told my office manager, let's publish this FAQ. Let's have a separate landing page that is focused on COVID. And during that time, we only had the parent corner on our website. Thanks to Bruce's team. Thanks to uh, Grow Your Center because they're managing our website. They had that foresight for us to have a parent corner. We placed everything there. Okay. And that's that's what we did. That we tackled it head on right right of the right the very first time that we heard about it. So, so then you just have to update that page and send everybody there. So you can just update that page real time. It it right? saved us a lot of time because <laughs> we just had to push a link to them and tell them this is our new letter to you guys for this week. Go to this link. That's it. Right. You send That's a it. link to them via Brightwell and via via text messages. They just click it. They go to our website and they find everything there from the very first letter that we sent them down to the very uh, latest one that we sent them. Then there are also the FAQs. Eventually, that actually grew to a uh, that grew to a COVID nineteen update landing page. We separated it from the parents simply because I realized. Well, I'm not only communicating now to my families, to my existing families. I'm now communicating to prospects. And I need to send them where potential prospects can read about us on what we're doing about COVID. That's why I asked Bruce's team again, hey, let's separate the parents' corner and the COVID-19 update and make a, a, a separate landing page focus on COVID-19 so that we can use it for both parents and for prospects. Mm. That's awesome. And for those people that aren't as tech savvy, a landing page is simply a web page that you create for a specific purpose that you can promote. So you can take, you know, you create a landing page on your website. It's a, it's a web page you inside of your site and you take the link and you put it in your ads and you drive traffic there for a specific purpose. It could be promotional or educational and you're doing more for educational, but I'm sure that you incorporated all of these marketing messages and your FAQs probably softly in also promotional type efforts, right? Because you yes. were using this as also a way to drive enrollment and make connections with community, et yes. cetera. Yes. So the very first, uh, the very first deep dive that you did together with Coach Brian, where we all held our computers and prayed because we're all <laughs> so emotional about it. Right. It sparked one thing in me. Uh, actually, it came from uh, Coach Brian, where he started about he started talking about goodwill, spreading goodwill, and I said, "Yeah, that would go a long way in this in this environment." So the first thing, intentionally and consciously, we ask our parents who amongst them would actually come back, who would not come back, and who are just staying. Like, no, they, we're not comfortable, but we want to we, we come back when, when it's time to come back. So we did an audit of all our parents, and we were able to, uh, we were able to come up with those parents who would really leave, leave and like, disenroll and, they, and those that are wanting to come back to us. And luckily, there are a lot of people who want to come back. There, there is a small portion where I, only, I, I, I came from 160 enrollment down to 25. Mm. And it, it was a big downtrend, really. And, but we had a very big gap with those that wanting to just um, like ride it for now and then come back. So we asked them in our, in our handbook, in our parent handbook, I can charge them still for two weeks, but intentionally and consciously, because of the goodwill I heard from Coach Brian, we intentionally did just 20% for them to stay on, like a hold spot. And a lot of them are still paying that hold spot. Then right. There are still parents who are still holding that spot and paying us. And part of the Goodwill also, we did the Goodwill series where uh, I copied Coach Brian, where we sent pizza boxes to our competitors and we gave them a card. Everyone signed in the card and we just had one message to them that we are all in this together. And the only thing I ask my office manager is just make sure that you get me a picture <laughs> that in, you're in front of that, you're in front of our competitor and that you're delivering the pizza and take a picture as well of the card that we're sending them. And she asked me why. Well, because I want to spread goodwill, not only like, not only within us, but I want the community to know. And we want to encourage all the other community, all the other businesses to do the same. Yes. And 
that that's actually my main reason. I mean, at the back of my mind, this is this is really like something that would drive traffic into my Facebook page, sure. But like deep in my heart, we were so emotional during that time. I just want to be able to be of help to the community and let the parents know that, hey guys, we haven't forgotten that we're part of this community. Mm-hmm. We're taking care of you guys because of the discount that we're giving you, because of the stay home, uh, the, the, the hold fee. And this is, by the way, also what we're doing with the community in general. And this is also what we're doing with, um, with our staff. Like we told them about what we are giving to our staff, uh, how we are taking care of our staff, avoiding the layoffs as, as much as we can. That Goodwill series video became a weekly thing. During the first two weeks, it was all our competitors. And then we shifted to um, giving uh, our uh, mailmen, our postal service guys uh, with alcohol, uh, spray alcohol. We didn't have masks. We can't source masks back then to give it to them, but we gave them alcohol. And we just told them that uh, we're, we're, we're with you on this one. And thank you for your service, for continue, continuing the service to us. So for sanitization, not for actually drinking alcohol. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. That's for sanitization. That's exactly right. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> That's awesome. So I love this. So you started out with weekly emails. Then you put it all into an FAQ page for a landing page on your website. You had an intentional effort to spread goodwill. You yep. started a goodwill series video yep. program promotion campaign. And so where's your enrollment today? Yeah, we are actually at 90% FTE combined. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Attend, yeah. Attending or attending plus still being held, space is held. Oh, attending. Those wow, attending. Alvin. Yeah, those are attending. Holy moly. Yeah, no. Um, for, the last, uh, for the last two, two three weeks, I would say, uh, there are only about four or five who are paying to hold their spots. Okay. Simply because they're already fearful and we're telling them, hey, we're running out of spots for you guys. Yeah. yeah. So we need to know when are you guys would uh, like hold off on this. So we only have about four or five. Plus, by the way, we also implemented a virtual preschool. We are continuing that. We have, again, we have a dedicated landing page on our e-preschool, on our virtual preschool. And right now, there are still five or six kids who are joining our uh, virtual pre- uh, preschool. I was expecting more. Um, I think after this is all said and done, I would try to put focus on that, on how I can actually really capitalize it to be a new revenue stream for us. It just surprised me that um, someone who was about 30, 45 miles away from us signed up for our virtual preschool. So she didn't know it as, us at all. She just saw us on, uh, she just Googled us. She found us on Google that we're offering virtual preschool and she signed up for it and we still have her. Mm. I don't think she would be, she, she would, she would at one point be our customer for, from our, from our location because she's 45 miles away from us. She just r- really wanting to capitalize on the virtual preschool that we're offering. Love that. Um, so with that attendance, that is quite something with 90%. I think you're one of the highest of all the academy because I run all the Empire Pods. And as you know, I think you are one of the highest in terms of enrollment. So you deserve a huge kudos and round of oh, applause. Thank you, you guys are. Thank you. You're doing so much. So I have are to you, give it to the team too. They, they, they really worked hard. Really yeah, so we're going to talk about team in a minute because yeah. I also want to talk quickly about your experience with Leadership Mastery because you're, I know you had some people on your oh, team yeah. uh, really oh, fired yeah. up about that course. So l- talk to me quickly about your phone and tour scripts. So another thing that I'm assuming you did in your e-packet is you probably took your phone script and you adjusted it slightly to address parents' fears for COVID as well as how you did your tours, right. maybe virtual tours and how right. you created, uh, changed your e-packet. So talk right. a little bit about what you did there. Right. So this COVID actually, I mean, for lack of a better term, is a blessing really. I was able to put a lot of hours into this business and it was the first time that we were able to implement our e-packet. Right. And we just did not actually do our regular e-packet. We created an e-packet solely on COVID. And that e-packet on COVID has all the things that we're doing. And there are top 20 things there that are focused on COVID alone. 
and how we actually use that. Um, you know your your phone script scoring uh, sheet that yeah. you give everyone? Uh-huh. So I just added one line there to score my team on how they are giving our USPs focus on COVID to score them so that it would not, they would not miss it when they actually talk to the parents, when they talk to the, to, to the, uh, to the uh, prospects, right? So we, I, I also had that printed and I told them, you need to be able to address and ask them if they have any concerns about COVID. That is one thing that I ask them to do. Ask them, even if they're not telling you they're not concerned, ask them if they're concerned because you want to tell them on what are all the things that we're doing. We're putting a lot of money into like making sanita- uh, like sanitation, disinfection, professional mm-hmm. disinfection for that matter. I want everyone to know that not because I want, I want, I want to put down my competitors or like just be able, just, just for them to know how much we care about them, that we're really taking this seriously. And that particular script that, uh, that, that we're putting forward about COVID-19, they're not asking us anymore to do a live virtual tour. We're just pushing to them the virtual tour that we also created during the time of COVID because we are not letting anyone uh, in the building other, right. than our, other than our staff and our kids. So we created that virtual tour. We're pushing that to them as well. So right now in our, in our funnel, um, you have a tour scheduled and tour completed. Tour scheduled for us right now is when we have sent them already the uh, virtual tour, the, the pre-recorded virtual tour to them, all right? And then we tell them, if you still have any questions and you want a live virtual tour, you need to call us back or we will call you after two days and ask if you still want us to do a live virtual tour. No one is asking for a live virtual mm. tour other than one parent because it's her first baby that she would be leaving to us. Other than that, the, the, the tour completed to us is when, when we call them back after two or three days and they tell us, no, we're ready. We're ready for uh, a registration. Wow. And then we mark them as tour completed. That's amazing. So I love that automation of your funnel and of the tour process. So again, With this crisis comes amazing innovation if you look for it and you implement it because now you've just saved your team so many hours of time doing tours because you've automated the whole thing. And so the expectation of parents has changed and they're fine with it and you're rocking it. Obviously, your virtual tour is fantastic, I'm sure. Right. So that's that's an incredible win. No, I can't can't believe my office managers have to... I have two office managers for each of the building. I can't believe I would hear from them, oh, geez, this CRM is really helping us a lot. Now it clicks to us on why we're using it. And for them, it's easy to use. Um, I mean, this is my thing. I'm, I'm a CRM administrator by trade, right? right at this. It, it is only helpful as much as you're using it. If yes. you're not using it and if you're not investing time learning the reports, learning how to use it yourself, it won't be really helpful, no matter how no matter how uh, how modern the the UI the user interface is, mm-hmm. or how much bells and whistles you put in there. If you're not regularly using it, and if you're not regularly using it correctly, it would just be garbage in, garbage out. Yes, what would happen? Very much so. And what CRM are you using? Is it childcare CRM or what? Yeah, one? we're using a childcare CRM. And my mantra to my team is: if it's not on CRM, it did not exist. It did not happen. So if they tell me that, uh, oh, I just got another drive-by and just got another tour, I just got another phone call, and if I check on CRM and it's not there, uh, well, it didn't happen. It's, it's not here. It didn't happen. I didn't know. Right. I don't know. How would I know that you did you did one, two phone calls or three phone calls? And they get it. They yeah. know it now. Yeah. And are you bonusing them at all? Or do they get any kind of perks for, you know, adopting your phone practices and doing great tours do they, and, do, and using CRM? Are they getting... Yeah, so our, our two office managers, actually one of our office managers, I've already started uh, giving bonus on, on her pertaining to enrollment and FTE. So she's been, we've been doing this for almost a year now with her. Uh, but with our second school, we, we are just about to implement that. And we are actually doing it's a it's a mixed bag of enrollment 
plus management by objectives or what I call MBOs, that their targets on what they need to be able to achieve. And it's, it, it's actually a team effort between the office manager and the director. Uh, so yes, we are, we are actually giving them bonuses on, on FTE and enrollment, not yet on the phone script because I think we're still, I'm still trying to solidify and make it actually worthwhile for them when we try to implement that. So you've done a ton and we could talk for another hour, Alvin, about oh, yeah. everything that you're doing, but let's talk a little bit about your team because I know that you have had an incredible, incredible growth in a you know, in the culture, the leadership, and all of the components that we teach in leadership mastery, yes. where you've gotten your team even to a higher level of buy-in and yes. implementation and embracing these practices. And yes. so when you had your your directors go through leadership mastery, and I know that you asked them to do it on their own time, yes. I believe. Yes. Um, so they didn't get paid for it. They didn't get paid for it. Tell me a little bit about their experience of how it was a shift for them and their thinking around leadership of a preschool. Yeah, sure. Let me step back before I answer that question. Okay. So when I joined the academy, uh, my, my biggest frustration is I'm able to like learn all this from Chris and all the coaches, but it's so difficult for me to easily cascade it to them because it's always like a black, it's like I'm, I'm always like, they're always like staring on a wall, like when, when I talk to them because they don't have the background. Right. And I was wishing actually that I hope Chris would be able to open uh, a course. And true enough, you guys opened that uh, leadership mastery course and I enrolled them right away. And I told them, well, I didn't enroll them right away because I had to ask them first. And I yeah. asked them, guys, I want you to enroll in this. I'll be paying for it. But there are a few caveats. One is I won't pay you for it because this is for you guys. Even if you leave Alvin, even if you leave just for kids preschool, you would still have this in you. It would be green in you. And I want you to have a skin in the game. And then the second one is I want you to have a, I learned this from coach Jen, uh, a will video, like a, what I learned video that they need to do for me every Friday. What did you learn? What are you trying to implement? And what was your realization? And it's just like a two to three minutes video and they would just submit that to me, right? What actually helped me, and I'm really very thankful, and I'll go to, the, to answering your question now. <laughs> it really changed the mindset during the time that we needed it most during the time of COVID mm -hmm. because they understood what we're going through and they've, you've changed because of the course that you gave. They've changed in terms of how they now see our business on how how we are positioning our business. They now see the value of themselves. They now see the value of their staff. They now learn, they now know what I mean by A, B, C, D, E, F employees or staff. We are now talking the same language. Right. And it's clicking for us now. It's not difficult for us anymore to it's not difficult for me anymore to cascade things to them whenever I learn something new. Chris, I'll be honest, like all the things that I've implemented, there's nothing new. I've learned all those from you guys from the deep dive calls. I just, I just innovated a few on how it would suit us. Right. There is nothing really new in there. I, I got all the letters that I've sent the parents from you guys. I've done all the COVID uh, goodwill, goodwill video series ideas from you guys. There was nothing that I was implementing that wasn't brand new or something that came from my mind. It's just that it was easier for us to implement because the mindset already changed just very timely during that COVID-19. Yeah, I thank you for saying that. And I feel so happy and blessed to have an impact on your leaders and the fact that the timing of Leadership Mastery was quite heaven sent. It started in mid-February and it ran through yeah. the third the third week in March, which was March. when everything was hitting. So we were also able to use some time yes. on our Q&A calls during Leadership Mastery to help people through what they were facing at that time, which was such a difficult, difficult time. Yeah, um, I had to give it to the team. It, part of it is empowerment, I would say. The, the admin team is power is empowered yeah. right now. It's so easy to get the idea to them because they know what I'm trying to drive at. It's not 
right now we're working on our core values. It's not a foreign, it's not a foreign language to them anymore when I talk about core values, core value statements. So easy to it clicks on them right away. Yeah, I think empowerment is the key. Alvin, you hit it right on the head. And it, it when you empower them to be um, have their own skin in the game for their own leadership journey, but you're supporting them yep. and you're motivating them, but they're empowered to go after it. Yes. It's an amazing, amazing thing. So yes. I just think you're doing incredible work. Um, and, and what part of California are you in again for the listeners? Uh, we are in Hesperia, California. Um, that's where my schools are. This is about the 30, 45 minutes north of Los Angeles. If you're coming from Los Angeles, heading to Vegas, that's, that's actually like the gateway to Vegas is what they call. Gotcha. Yeah. So right by the 15 corridor, actually, it's where, where the high desert is what it's called. Gotcha. Cool. How can people find out more about your program and check out what you're doing online? What sure. We are, we, we have a, a awesome website. We have an awesome website produced by Bruce's team, uh, grow your center just for kids, preschool.com. Everything just. is there. Everything is there. Just. And then the number four, number four, preschool. 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 Yep. Just for just kids, for kids preschool. preschool.com. That's okay, right. Cool. And yeah, thanks for the shout out to Grow Your Center. Uh, there are partners and uh, Bruce and I are partners in that business. And we're having a really good time making amazing websites and doing great Facebook ads and social media content for people and Google AdWords. So yeah, um, I'm enjoying working with the, I'm enjoying working with Bruce team. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty, pretty fun, pretty smart and a very, very fast, uh, you know, they're, they're a pretty fast production company because we're making, we're making killer websites like oh, really quick. on steroids right now. So. Really, really quick. They, they, they turn it around really quick. I don't yeah. know how they do it, but they really turn it around. Yeah, really. it's, it's one, good. Chris, one nugget that I would yeah. be recommending that would probably help uh, one marketing nugget I yes. would just put out there. So that e-packet of COVID-19 that we have, we're transitioning that to a lead magnet that would be posted on our uh, on our COVID-19 update landing page. It's called the Definitive Guide Identifying a COVID-19 Ready Preschool. That's still mm. too much to work. Like I, I'm probably like trying to like shorten it, but really a de- definitive guide on a, on on a parent on how they can evaluate a a COVID-19 ready preschool. And every it's just really our COVID-19 e packet, but I'm right. repurposing it for a lead magnet. Wow. I love that. The title is very strong. The definitive guide. Love, love, love it. You're, I mean, Alvin, I, the, the, the big question on the, on the podcast is how do you define a childcare rock star? But for me, it's you. Oh, you, you are truly rocking it so much with your leadership, your implementation, your marketing, everything you're doing, serving children and families at the highest level, the goodwill, uh, the intentionality and just um, you're doing it with heart. And so I just have to commend you. I'm so you. blessed to have you in the Academy and have you be an example of um, a young, but fast paced entrepreneur in this business. It's really, it's, it's exciting to watch. We are as blessed uh, having known you guys and with you and your coaches with the coaches. Gosh, I, what, you guys define as well the child care rock star. Um, you guys have the heart and you consciously, uh, you consciously try to be, you, you consciously be optimist amidst all the challenges. And that's what actually gravitates me towards this group, really. Everyone is a rock star because they have the heart and they're consciously being optimist. Really very mm-hmm. happy. Great. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. I could talk to you for hours longer <laughs> about everything since we both love marketing and we're really into it. Um, but I will bring you back to the podcast at some future time where we can talk more uh, about your success and your journey. And guys, go check out Alvin's school. And if you want to know more about him at just for kids preschool, the number four.com. Yes. Uh, Alvin Ayusa, it's been great to have you here. Oops. Thank you, Chris. Thank you so much. Uh, thanks so much. And it's very fitting that you're also featured on episode 75 because it's kind of a milestone episode. It is. And, uh, I love that. And I just love having you in the group. And uh, good luck on your baby. Thank you. 
take care and we'll see everybody next time. Thanks for tuning in guys. All right. Bye-bye. I hope you liked this episode of Child Care Rockstar Radio. If you did, please share it with someone you know and help spread the word to your friends in our industry and on social media. Child Care Business Success is my passion and I'm honored to be on the 